And I guess the last question is, have you ever found dates using the dating apps? I, I got to say, I've not been very successful through the dating app uh, system. I've done a lot of swiping. I don't know that I've swiped right. But you do just swipe. So there you go. But I did just swipe. This is David Starr from Watcher Pass, and today I'm talking to David Lipper, who plays Brandon in Just Swipe, which is available on February 8, 2022, just in time for your socially distanced Valentine's Day. We're going to talk to him right now, and while you're watching, if you can like and subscribe to this channel, that would be fantastic. It helps me out a lot. Thank you. Hi. Hey, David. How's it going? Doing well. How are you? Good, thanks. Awesome. So thanks so much for joining me. This is David Lipper, who's, who plays Brandon in Just Swipe, which is out already. It came out on February 8, 2022. It's a socially distanced Valentine's Day movie that uh, is has a big draw as it has two full house stars in it together at last and uh david lipper is one of them and thank you so much for your time oh it's my pleasure thanks for having me of course uh so i guess the first question is you know like how did you get involved in this this is a uh, it's it, it were you just like in quarantine and this came up and you're like hey you know what i'll just do what i do normally during quarantine except now i get to make a movie or you know how did this kind of come to your desk not a bad guess uh but here's what happened well first of all i'm in mississippi right now from the hotel room i'm on my eighth film since covid started oh, wow. um and you really how this kind of all started is i was directing a film called death link which just came out a couple of months ago it's on all the platforms uh, now. It was the first film I ever directed. And um, that's, that's awesome. That's a huge thanks, accomplishment. Man. And also to do it yeah. during COVID, that makes it even well, more difficult. Well, there was no COVID when <laughs> we started. Ah, so it. I started March 10th of 2020. And um, Elizabeth Blake Thomas was my first AD. And I, I connected with her at Sundance that year. And I said, I'm making this film. And I know how important the first is. And as a first time director, I really wanted a director uh, to have my back as my first. And um, I said, would you be interested in something like that? And she said, absolutely. I would love to first for you. Um, and that was the first time we got to work together. Uh, and she was phenomenal. I got to tell you, like, it's one thing to shoot a movie in 11 days, which is already crazy. It's another when you have a 16 day shoot and it becomes 11 days because wow. of the pandemic in the middle of the shoot. And what happened was we had shot the first week and then we got back to my house. We were all kind of quarantining anyway in my house because Elizabeth lives on a boat and some of the people were from out of town. So we were just all at my house. And um, we put on CNN and there's the president basically telling us we have a pandemic. Mm -hmm. We were like, because when you're in a movie, you're hyper-focused on the film. The whole outside world doesn't exist. And, um, and New York was shut down and LA was next. And I said, my God, we're, we're not going to make it. There's no way we're going to make it two more weeks. And then Allie Simpson's mom was on the phone with me and she's from Australia saying, send my daughter home. There, there's only a few flights left in the next few days to go back to Australia. So we, you know, we scrambled and Elizabeth, it was like Rain Man. She said, okay, let's put a pile here, a pile here. A pile. We put papers all over my floor for all the scenes of the movie that were left. And then we're like, we can put this in this house, this in this house, we lose this house, we lose this place, we do two days here instead of four. I mean, that's how we did it. And wow. it was such an amazing experience. We got it done, the movie's released. Um, and I said, that's a person I'm gonna work with again. And the thing with me, you'll notice, uh, I've produced, like I said, this is my eighth film now since COVID started. Um, I use a lot of the same people because when I find good people who work well with me, I hire them again. Um, and because I'm a producer now, I get to hire the people. Um, so Elizabeth came to me in the middle of COVID and said, hey, we shot a movie during COVID by accident. You've already shot another movie since then. How about we do this movie I've got? And it's about these people in quarantine trying to date. And I think we can lock ourselves in that Sinatra house, which we used in Deathlink. And what do you think? And I read the script and I said, I think it's brilliant. And funny enough, Wendy Braff, the writer, is Wendy Braff, who I went to theater camp with when I was 15. <laughs> and Wendy Braff, who went to Emerson College with me, who put me in her first pilot that she made there. And I'm like, I know Wendy Braff. <laughs> and, you know, and we come from the half hour world. She was, um, she was uh, a sitcom writer at the same period of time when I was on Full House. So, um, 
So I said, this is amazing. I mean, yeah, this, this like, let's do it. And, uh, and she said, well, would you produce this as well? And I said, sure, I'll, I'll help put this together. And, um, and then she said, okay, well, who do you think for the lead? And it literally took me all of five seconds to go, Jody, sweet. I mean, Perfect. you know, Jody and I have become friends uh, post Full House. They brought me back to Fuller House to do a couple of episodes as Viper on that. And um, I've gotten to know her as an adult. And uh, of course, she was a child when I did the first uh, run of Full House back in 94 and 95 when I was on. And, um, and she's really grown into a super talented uh, a comedic actress, a really, really good actress all around. And um, I said, let me see what Jody says. I sent it to her via her manager, Rachel, who's also my manager, as luck would have it. And, um, and she said, yes. And, and that's really how this whole thing came together. Then it was a matter of, I, I brought in a very good friend of mine to, to cast it. Um, and she started pulling names that we went after, like Alec Mappa, and we was like a wish list. But Sarah <laughs> O'Neill, our, our casting director, was very aggressive and pushy and, and got him there. And I mean, Alec steals the show as far as I'm concerned. Uh, he's really one of the most brilliant comedic actors out there. In fact, Alec Baldwin said he's one of the most brilliant comedic actors out there. When the, he did the pilot with him last year with Kelsey Grammer, uh, where Alec uh, Mappa was the third roommate to Alec Baldwin and Kelsey Grammer in this kind of odd couple um, new take. And, and a, he said it's the funniest man he's ever worked with. So that's a very odd couple. And yeah, you definitely have to have someone like Alec to, I don't know, supercharge the comedy, right? Because this film, you've got the difficulty of most of the things happening over Zoom, which it's tough to, it's tough to make a connection over Zoom. I mean, we've been doing it, but it is tough to make like a solid connection. It's tough to kind of have comedy when you're not in the same room. So yeah, definitely having him there to like supercharge all the situations and kind of add some ridiculousness to the, to the scenario was a, a smart well, choice. And, you know, it's interesting you, you say that because we all have been focused on the, the negatives of COVID. Like, well, it's not the same. We're on Zoom, we're on FaceTime, we're we're not getting to physically connect with people. What are the ramifications of this? I think this film pushes us to examine what are the positives mm -hmm. that we can take. And I always like to find the positives as an actor um, and someone who's, who's coached many actors. I always say, let's make positive choices. Let's make choices for a win uh, and, and winning our objectives. What is the positive win here? And when you really think about it, the real message here, you look at Jody in the beginning of the movie and she's a smart, beautiful career woman who's empowered and she, like so many women today, meets a guy in a dating app, has dinner, takes him home, wakes up and goes, oh God, I should, maybe shouldn't have had that fifth glass of wine. <laughs> um, and, um, and we can all relate to that as just kind of the norm today. But what this movie has forced us to do is say, well, wait a sec, what if we take the time to get to know the person first and what we're forced to do by being in quarantine and talking like I'm talking to you right now through this computer is actually develop a friendship, actually develop a connection in a whole different way, in an intellectual way, in a uh, spiritual connection via, hey, we have a lot in common or we have a lot of things not in common where we may find those things out before jumping into bed with somebody. And, um, and I think this forces us to take a good hard look and say, well, wait a sec, I think we've lost something in the courtship period that we used to have. When you look at all the classic romances from the old rom-coms, the kiss didn't happen till the end of the movie. Yeah, that was the, that was the big scene, yeah. Yeah, the big thing was the kiss yeah. at the end. And, and this is really a throwback, if you think about it, to the classic old rom-coms where that kiss doesn't happen till the end of the movie. Oops, should not have given that away. Oh, spoilers. I think, we, I think we know it's coming. Um, but, but that's the thing. And I think there's a real lesson for all of us to learn here, which is let's take a step back. Maybe it's not a regression, but maybe it's a recalibration to the way things should go. We should get to know the person first before we get intimate with them. And maybe that will create longer lasting relationships um, versus these relationships that are based on sex or based on other physical things that then we go, oh my God, this person's crazy. Why is this person in my life? And it's like, well, did you know the person really before you got to level 10? And maybe we get to level two and level three and level four and level five and so on, like it used to be. 
And I'm glad that our relationship is pretty much purely physical though. Like this, this relationship that we have is you know, 100% physical. If, like this is, if you only you're shaved, I, you know. <laughs> Sorry, I, I can't, you can't change me. You can't change who I am. <laughs> uh, so one thing I did like, I really liked about this is that there's a lot, like you, you have movies that kind of have dealt with the quarantine. This movie is one of them where it like has a lot of very timely references, things that feel very modern. And you mentioned that the script, you know, came to you during quarantine. Did you all like change up the script as you were filming it as like new things were happening or new kind of practices were happening? Like how fluid was that process? Or was it just like, you got the script, you had, you know, like 11, 12, 13 days to film. So you just did it and then kind of moved on. And it kind of was timely because the process was so quick. Well, it's actually a great question because not to have to go back to Deathlink, but I'm going to. Um, <laughs> in Deathlink, uh, in that film, originally, it was written that people were texting each other all the time and you'd see the text messages pop up like we've seen a hundred times. I wanted to get off the written stuff and get into physical pictures and said, well, why don't we start using video chats? And these kids have some magical new app where you can talk to people like you and I are talking. I had no idea what Zoom was at the time. And then Zoom exploded while I was in the editing room. And I'm like, oh, this is how it works. There's a guy here, then he goes to this box, then it moves to this box, you know? And then, uh, then I figured it out in post on how to take all those shots I did of your point of view, my point of view, right? And mm -hmm. I would then put that in the screens, right? So I shot phone screens, I shot laptop screens, and then I would put the shots in. And I wasn't sure how it was all gonna work. So very much it happened in the process yeah. where I was learning about it while it was happening. And I said, this is how it looks as I was watching Zoom calls I was on. For Just Swipe, Elizabeth had already had some time now to see what Zoom was. Um, this, was um, this was November of 2021 that we shot it, that 2020 that we shot it. So um, it was a very scary time. It was yeah. still quarantine. We still didn't have a vaccine, but we were pretty sure it was right around the corner. Um, so we thought by Valentine's Day, it should be out. And we stuck with that date. And we were pretty bang on the money because the vaccine really came out January, February, right, of last year. So, um, um, and so that's kind of how it happened in real time where we were massaging what that date is when the vaccine would come out and they would actually finally get to meet in person. But we were in quarantine and, and we were basically all holed up in this um, Frank Sinatra estate in Woodland Hills. And we designated certain areas of the house. It's a really cool house because all these different rooms are um, very different. And, and there's a guest house that looks like a different apartment. And so we, we redressed all these areas to be different spaces. And we all basically lived there and shot there. And we just shot out one space at a time. And that's how we were able to shoot this movie in so few days. And um, I shot all my coverage. So all the stuff looking right at me, um, like I'm talking to you from the computer point of view and from the other camera that was shooting at the same time. I did it in a day, which oh, was wow. 60, 60 odd pages, which is unheard of, I'm sure. And most directors would probably go, what did he say? Yeah, that's, um, that's but, nuts. Uh, you know, the thing is, it's not so nuts on the film side because I'm in the same space. It's lit. The cameras are there. It's just swapping out sets and swapping me out in different clothing. But as an actor, I had to learn. 65 pages of dialogue and that is not easy it was like merry christmas <laughs> thanksgiving happy yeah. thanksgiving you know and uh i mean i was like okay, let me see the sides uh right it's this seat got it and but you know that's that's from years and years and years of television that i can memorize that kind of that amount of dialogue you know it's interesting we don't have um certifications as actors you're just an actor who's worked and they like you as an actor or they don't like you as an actor you don't normally get references on hey how much dialogue can you learn in a day or how good is he at hitting his mark or you, it's it's strange it's the one business where the actual work flow abilities aren't necessarily on the job district description uh like in most jobs but that happens to be one of my strengths so luckily i was able to uh to do that and uh i think jody had at least two or three days for all her coverage but i said i would do my best to get it done in a day and it worked uh two things like a 
not just the 65 pages of dialogue, but like 65 pages of emotional progression, like essentially a, a, a year and a half of emotional progression in one day seems also like a big, you know, difficult aspect for you to do. Also, you sound like you had one of the best quarantine experiences I've ever heard of. Like you were just hold, hold up in Frank Sinatra's estate for the time with your friends. It was amazing. Movie. Yeah. That sounds awesome. I, I mean, I can't believe I, I, I'm on my eighth film in COVID. Yeah. I mean, people look, uh, I will say it is a, a tremendous gift that those of us in the entertainment business have had this exemption to, to work while people have not been able to. And I sympathize and empathize um, with everyone who's had a hard time being stuck at home and not being able to work. And I don't take that lightly. Um, and I'm certainly beyond grateful um, for that exemption. But I also think it's a very necessary exemption because we need the media out there. Um, telling us what's going on and giving us the news. And thank God we were able to provide entertainment to people because mm -hmm. I cannot imagine how people would have gotten through this without stuff on the TV to watch. Uh, imagine being locked in your house. Imagine the way it was, you know, when the Spanish flu happened um, back before there was a TV. And, and I mean, what did they do all day stuck in their homes in quarantine? I cannot even imagine a lot of books, I'm yeah. guessing. Ra um, radio, maybe, but, I don't know. Yeah, radio, around. radio books. Um, but the fact that we were able to, to do that, you know, I, I didn't see that as something morally or ethically challenging. I saw that as, as a duty, yeah. to be quite honest. We have a duty, those of us in the media and entertainment business, to make sure that at the very least, no matter what's happening in the world, we're gonna take a chance, we're gonna put ourselves at risk and we're gonna make sure that we're delivering content so people don't blow their brains out. Sorry to make it that dramatic, but like, I think it's that dramatic and it has been for a lot of people that thank God we have, at least were able to provide some relief. And that's, you know, not to sound too tooting or, or, or arrogant or anything like that because we're just regular people who make films instead of some other job. But, um, but I did very much see that this was an opportunity um, to not sit back and feel sorry for myself and lock myself in my house and be scared. But it was an opportunity to say, you know what, I'm gonna take a few chances. Um, and by the way, as a producer, can't even tell you the risks um, in making a film in COVID, God forbid somebody on the set gets mm -hmm. sick, you have to shut down. We spent a fortune on testing, not one person got sick on any of those shoots. Wow. Uh, and, and I take a lot of, I take a lot of um, pride in that because we were extremely strict. Nobody could enter that space who didn't have a negative test and wasn't in full PPE gear, yeah. um, masks and, and the whatnot, sanitizer everywhere, uh, packaged meals to eat, no buffets. No, you know what I mean? Like we were just, we had the protocols down right from the beginning. We were probably the first film to shoot in COVID. I mean, we were, you know, because it happened in the middle. Yeah. And it seems like all those protocols and all that gear came in the hand, came in handy when you were making the movie too. So that's, uh, I'm glad that that was all kind of real life experience. That's right. Uh, so now we have limited time. I'm switch, I call it the lightning round. It's just very lightweight questions about the film. I want to see how your experiences map to things that happen in the film. You can feel free not to answer any of them. I will not be offended, but I try to keep them very answerable. Sure. First question is, have you ever used dating apps? I have, and I do. There we go. Have you ever used an advantageous picture uh, for your dating profile? Like I mean, an older picture or like a certain angle? Like I have a very specific angle that I try to keep on when I'm doing Zoom so that my best face is forward. Do you have anything like that in your uh, in your dating profile? I think I've got a 10-year-old a, a picture in there. <laughs> and uh, and then I've got some recent ones. So there's a there's a mix, but there's definitely some older pics in there. You you still look young, 10 years old. You yeah. probably look the same in 10 years old. Oh, yeah, I don't think uh, so. And I guess the next question is, have you ever found dates using the dating apps? I got to say, I've not been very successful through the dating app uh, system. I've done a lot of swiping. I don't know that I've swiped right. But you do just swipe. So there you go. But I did just swipe. Uh, have you ever house sat? Other than Frank Sinatra's estate, which I guess is a kind of house sitting. I de generally have not house sat, but I, I've had many house sitters for my dogs over the years. Um, have you? So Jody's character's job in this was kind of manipulating search history results could be one way to say it just kind of like burying bad stories have you ever used a service like that to i don't know either raise your raise certain stories for you or push some, some down 
Luckily, I don't think I've been important enough to have to do that. <laughs> so I have not ever used yeah. such a service. <laughs> I think I would, I would use one to be like, you know, have, have me actually pop up. Like I would like people to actually find me. So. I don't even think I knew that service existed <laughs> until this movie. Yeah, it's a strange world we live in. Yeah. Um, so on a date, you know, your character prepared a lot of meals during this, uh, this movie. What is your like go-to meal to prepare for a date? I have a lot of go-to meals. Um, I'm very good with a tri-tip, I have to tell you. That sounds um, amazing. I have a lot of pride in my grill and my grilling hands. Um, I'm, I'm good with a good marinade and rub, um, ribs, uh, tri-tip, uh, any steak, burger, hot dogs. That's, um, that and sounds then, amazing. Yeah, that's, and salads. I'm actually pretty good at chopping a little this and that getting a little avocado in there some good dressings that's a that's a nice balance i like that you got the the, the heavy protein and then the light salad it works out well and i make a mean bread pudding and apple crisp i can i can actually bake those two things just tell me the day i'll be there that sounds fantastic uh, and the last question is uh do you have a friend that you have never met in person that you've only interacted through on like zoom or phone or the internet something like that my last five girlfriends. Oh. No. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think pretty much uh, everybody uh, I, I Zoom with and stuff I've met. Well, the funny thing is, you know, uh, the director I just hired for, for this movie I'm shooting now called, um, called Hunt Club, Janelle Shercliffe, we had been basically just interacting via Zoom and FaceTime, I'd never actually met her until we just got to the location. So oh, wow. I did now meet her, but there had been a long period um, where we'd been talking and um, and I hadn't actually met her. Wow, that's yeah. that's amazing. That's a, that's a lot of trust. I mean, I guess you probably had seen her work and she's seen your work. So she it is a lot of trust and I have seen her work and, you yeah. know, but it's interesting how, how much of a relationship, a friendship we developed um, just by talking through Zoom uh, and working together this way. And I will tell you this, on my Christmas film that was released by the CBC December 1st that I wrote called A Christmas Letter, um, I did the entire scouting with the director. We were in quarantine in Canada. So this was April, May. When we got to Canada, it was it didn't matter we had double shots. They put us into two week quarantine back then. Oh, wow. And so we didn't have the ability to go to the location. So we had somebody with an iPhone shooting the locations and Brian, the uh, director was kind of guiding them through the angles and everything. And we were recording it on Zoom. And then we, we were able to basically go through it and look at the shot list and everything um, by playing back the Zoom and locations. And I'm like, wow, this is actually even better than, than normal. So, yeah. There we go. A brave new world. And it sounds like it you are keeping A lot busy. of positives, a lot yeah, of positives to take from this whole thing we've been through. Look on the bright side. Well, thank you so much for your time. This is Dave Lipper, who plays Brandon in Just Swipe, which is available now, February 8th, 2022, just in time for either in-person or socially distanced Valentine's Day. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Thank you so much. I would uh, I would normally stay in chat, but I got to run uh, help. Oh, uh, no problem. Me. Thanks so much for having me, David. No, thank you so much for uh, for your time and for carving out. It sounds like you're busy. Uh, you're in Mississippi, you said? I am in Mississippi, yes. Mississippi. Very yeah. cool. Three in a awesome. row here. I wasn't. I, I thought you were in a hotel room. I was like, maybe he just has very like utilitarian. Uh, no, decor. I have a much nicer house than this. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, All pleasure right, to you. Take care. You too. Bye. Bye. That was David Lipper talking about Just Swipe, which is available on February eighth, twenty twenty two, just in time for Valentine's Day. Watch it with your Valentine. Watch it with your friends. Watch it socially distanced over Zoom. Up to you. It's it's an enjoyable movie. Watch it socially distanced over Zoom up to you um watch it with your valentine watch it with your friends watch it over zoom with your socially distance watch it with your valentine watch it with your friends or watch it over zoom on your socially distance valentine's day if you like this interview please like and subscribe to this channel it helps me out a lot make sure all my new content goes straight to you and please check out my other content i've got other interviews reviews unboxing videos or recommendations thank you mm -hmm.